CatteratCoach.com podcast series, episode number 46, with Dr. Shiraz Daya, encouraging entrepreneurship in ophthalmology. Welcome back to our Cataract Coach podcast today with Dr. Shiraz Daya from London. Shiraz has an incredible center there called Center for Sight, and he'll tell us all about that, but he has a very interesting journey in ophthalmology, including a large stint in the USA. So Shiraz, welcome to our podcast. Great. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, I feel very honored and privileged to be selected to be on your podcast. And uh, uh, Well, it's, it's my way of saying thank you. I've learned so much from you over the years. You're you know, a brilliant ophthalmologist, absolutely brilliant. Oh, and, uh, you, you say that to all the boys. No. <laughs> but tell us about your path in ophthalmology because it's a, a little bit of a circuitous path involving a couple of yeah. multiple countries. It is. It is. You know, I, I'm. I'm from. I'm a. I'm of Indian origin from East Africa. You know, I'm an East African Asian. Uh, grew up in Tanzania. Born in Kenya. Grew up in Tanzania. Went to school in India in South India for in very early days, between the ages of ten and fifteen. A kind of a brutal place uh, up in the Nilgiri Hills, which are more like mountains, eight thousand feet above sea level. And then I came to the UK and went to high school here, and went to medical school in Dublin. Um, qualified there, and then I went to Belfast, Northern Ireland, right in the midst of the Troubles in 1984, right on the Falls Road for a year, by choice. I, I, I learned a lot about people then. I'm not going to comment too much. We'll, we could do that over a beer sometime. But then I went to New York after that, and I, and I couldn't get into ophthalmology. This is 1985. Sure. Uh, I did internal medicine, and um, I finished in 1988. You did a full three-year internal medicine residency. Yeah, I'm board certified in internal medicine. So when you're on the airplane and they say, is there a doctor on board? You can do more than me. I can only check the oh, pupils. I, I pick up the, the newspaper and I cover my head. <laughs> well, so, so you, did, you did a three-year internal medicine residency and fully okay. qualified as, as a primary care doctor. That's right. I worked in the emergency rooms. I moonlighted in the emergency rooms. I got into ophthalmology straight after. <laughs> I, did my, I did the boards while I was, doing, while I was in ophthalmology residency. And uh, yeah, it helped supplement my income on the weekends. Every so sure. often, do a twelve-hour shift at uh, New York downtown or Beekman Hospital, and uh, eventually that got that really wasted me. I had to stop doing that, especially when the chairman found out. He said, "Well, you got to make a choice. You know, <laughs> if, if, if you've chosen ophthalmology, you better just stick to it." And um, so I did. But so that was that. So I went. To, I, went I did a residency in ophthalmology in New York at a place called at a two-bit center called Catholic Medical Center. And it was David Payton of Project Orbis fame, and mm. King Colored um, Eye Specialty Hospital and the Cullen Eye Institute. And, you know, the son of Townley Payton, the person who, who set up the first eye bank in, in the USA. So he was my, my mentor and my chairman at the time. And uh, what a great inspiration to have as a, as a, as a mentor and uh, you know, everything was possible. He, he could turn people into gold. It was, it was, he had this touch. And I, I'm very grateful that he found me and brought me in uh, and, uh, and I had the opportunity to become a, an ophthalmology resident. Um, and after that, I went into the fellowship in Minneapolis with Dick Lindstrom and Ed Holland. So mainly under Ed Holland, wow. Dick Lindstrom had gone into private practice. So we spent six months on each side. And oh, that was well, fantastic. I mean, it was really amazing about it. I was exposed to several individuals so is uh, uh ed holland dick lindstrom steve lane um and uh oh, i can't remember the names don, don doofman and uh who else was there? there there were a couple of others but you could say you could they all had the different awesome superstars. so yeah they were it was fantastic and i could take the best out of each one of them what i you know what what what, what i aligned with me personally and that variety was was in one year i absorbed a huge amount um, I also had the opportunity because you know they, they had a who's who for grand rounds, and although I had to cover the residence as a fellow, I used to sneak into grand rounds there and hear all these big names in the who's who in ophthalmology in, in the United yeah. States come and talk for two or three hours, and uh, I was like a sponge. I just soaked it all in. It didn't matter whether it was neuroophthalmology or retina or uveitis. Although as a as a cornea fellow, I. The information was fantastic and the exposure to those individuals was great. So that, that brain power, that knowledge base in the United States, I, it was just, it was what a privilege to have. I, 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 would, I would do it all over again in a flash. Well, it sounds an amazing experience. But yeah, you're right. At the young ages, even I remember back, 
Like I was so enthralled with learning about anything in ophthalmology. Like retina, the, the, the fun of the excitement of learning was wow. No, it's great. And, and you know, especially when, you're, when, you, when you've been to a, a, a sort of community a residency program where it's kind of mediocre, everything's mediocre, and then you, then you come to a level of excellence, which is kind of what I always aspired to do. I always wanted to be a mediocrity, as David Payton used to say, be like, you know, mediocrity should never be in your vocabulary. You, you need it. You need, anything you do, you need to do the best of your ability and surround yourself with really good people. Um, and I'm sorry I can't provide them that here at the Catholic Medical Center, but as you go through life, just just do that. Just surround yourself with 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 these with these superstars, and you'll you know it'll it'll, it'll, it'll transfer across. So always think you know strive for the heights, and that was always stuck with me. So going to Minneapolis was was fantastic. Just get that exposure. All those the, you know the who's who, amazing, amazing. As you say, and then have, uh, good. Anything to do with ophthalmology was was great, and seeing yeah. to me now. For so sure. I feel very fortunate and blessed to have had all those opportunities, traveling to different countries and and um, getting exposure. Um, so after I finished ophthalmology, I tried, you know, I decided to look for a job in the United States. I went to Albuquerque to the University of New Mexico. Um, wow. I went to private practices in Connecticut and other uh, university places. And I just didn't, I just didn't feel I could work for anybody else. So David Payton basically gave me his practice. He, he uh, got, got kind of run out of town by the, by the establishment at the Catholic Medical Center. So I took over his practice and I did a lot of cornea very, very quickly because he had a, you know, a huge cornea practice sure. Sure. and I got off the flying start. But then, you know, after a year and a half of being in practice in New York, it was on Madison Avenue in Queens and Brooklyn. And I taught residents as well. I just, you know, I, I came to the United States to get an education, and I just, I just, I used to wake up in the morning. I was, I wasn't married. I was single. I used to wake up on a on a Saturday and Sunday. And like, what am I doing here? What am I? <laughs> you, know, you wake up in the morning, and then you just don't know what you're going to expect when you go back right. to work the following week. Something's got to change, and that's when I thought, well, maybe I should think about going back to Europe. And um, and then it's amazing. You know, you you plant a seed, and sometimes the universe goes ahead and presents you with opportunities. So I was looking to go to Spain. I thought, what's like, well, you know, where can I go? It's good good weather and 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 it's it, 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 a little bit behind the time. And Spain, I went to the, I was, I was trying to get a, a, trying to set up a, an ophthalmic department at the at the hospital of Costa del Sol. And um, we were making good progress, but they wanted me to do, to set up the emergency department as well, since I've done emergency medicine. And I thought, like, I'm an ophthalmologist, guys. I, you know, I, I can help you with that, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to run it. You, you, you tell them, I want to do coronaries, not coronaries. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And and anyway, that, so to cut a long story short, a, a job came up in the UK, and it was Tom Casey, who is a well-known corneal surgeon. Uh, internationally, he wrote a book on corneal grafting. And he was at this place called, called East Grinstead, uh, uh, quite, quite well-known. And they were looking for a cornea sp uh, a person. Um, and I thought, well, well, my brother found the advertisement in the prison. <laughs> it was in the wrong place. It was under under plastic surgery instead of because they call it the cornea plastic unit, and it was under plastic uh, surgery as opposed to ophthalmology. And my brother's a was is an ENT surgeon, so otolaryngology, and straight after ot otolaryngology was plastics. And he went to think that this is in the wrong place. But gosh, this sounds like what my brother's doing in New York. Maybe I should send it to him. So he sent the the, the, the advertisement, and he called up the region and he said, well. He, would you take my brother? He's a corneal specialist in New York, and he's GMC registered. He's you know, trained in, in Ireland. I said, yeah, 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 we'd love to, see, love to meet him. By coincidence, I was going to the UK that weekend to see my mother who was visiting from Tanzania. And I went to, uh, 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 the plane arrived in Gatwick, and it's only 10 minute, a 10 minute drive from Gatwick. So I went to the place, and it was an absolute dump. And there's a guy called Steve Whiffen who I owe a lot to. He was a locum. He was a fellow of, of Tom Casey's, and he was working as a locum consultant in that department doing the transplants and looking after all these patients mm -hmm. and he convinced me to take the job and he wanted to come to the united states to train in cornea and he was trying to do a swap so he went to minnesota but he went to the mayo clinic and wow uh, um uh with bill Bourne and others and i came to east grinstead and that's, that's how i got started in the uk and i have not looked back well see you know it's funny i think everyone i've spoken to and, and, and me included Everything in life is about good mentors, and that's just about serendipity, just about luck. And I think sometimes it's good. things just happen. 
and I think there's a magical ingredient, and that's your own your own what you're aspiring to do yourself, right? What your own right. is. What you what are you looking for for yourself and being true to yourself? Then I think then you recognize all those opportunities. So it may be serendipity, but it may not be too. There's there's something at work there. And look, it's a little, a little hidden kismet. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. It's, you know, call it charm, call it whatever you want. But there's something there. There's there's some yeah. energy there that's connecting. And I'm a true. I, I truly believe that. And it's a. Uh, it's. I've always found that. Some you know sometimes there's, there's decisions. You know things when things are, are really difficult. It's probably not the direction you're supposed to go in, right? And when it comes really naturally, it just you just flow. You're drawn to it, right? So when I was coming when I was coming to the UK. There was only one person who thought it was a good idea, and that was David Payton. Everybody else thought it was a crazy idea. I was going back in time. There was, the, you know, it was, a, it was a ridiculous idea. My cousins, my uncles, my, my cousins of mine left the UK and arrived in the United States, uh, and Easters and others. I said, "What are you doing? Going back to the UK? It's a disaster." I just felt instinctively it was going to be fine, and the demogra demographics were right, the place was right. And uh, I did it. It was very. It all works out. It's, it's, uh, as I say, if 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 anybody listening, you know, sometimes if just go with the flow. If the, if things are really straightforward, yeah, you know, maybe that's maybe that's the that's the journey you're supposed to be taking. That's a great point. Now, when did you set up Center for Sight? It must be almost thirty years now. It's yeah, uh, twenty-seven years. So wow. I arrived in. Uh, in fact, I, I'll be in the UK thirty years on March first. So I arrived at Gatwick Airport on 1st of March, and I went straight into work from the airport. Everybody thought I was crazy. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, well, I set up a private practice in, in, as, as myself in July that year. And then I decided to, I started working for a later center, and I was a medical director. And, you know, it's, in, in Britain, it's a little bit different. Well, in those days, it was very different from the United States, right. where it was all about the doctor. They were kings. They were gods. I mean, you talk to a patient, they go, well, you're the doctor, you're the expert, you tell me what I got to do. They go, wait, 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 wait a minute. That's not the way it works. It's, it's kind of a shared, it's a shared thing here. We, I talk to yeah. you. It's not because I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking right. to you because you have to make a choice. It's your body, it's your eyes. Anyway, it was, it was different. But the way in which the patients were looked after in, in terms of refractory surgery was terrible. And I thought the only way to do it is to set up my own center. So I bought a laser. Um, I mean, <laughs> There's a company called LaserSight. It's an absolute disaster. But again, serendipity. So I bought a LaserSight laser. They were chasing me at the end of the quarter in 1996 to buy one of their lasers. And I was in, in the Ruaha Reserve in Tanzania. And they were trying to contact me by satellite phone <laughs> yet in deal before, before New Year's Eve. And I just gave them a price. And they said, fine. And I said, OK, well, I'll. You know, when I get back to Dar es Salaam, I signed the papers, and they were there. They'd been faxed over. I signed them, and they shipped out the laser on the second of January, and it arrived. Wow. Up I didn't even have a place for it, so oh god, you know, here I go. Uh, now I now I have to set up a laser center. You know, it's all been shipped, and I have to pay them for it. Um, anyway, I took me about four months to get five months to get started, and I did. And the laser was a dog. The company were 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 terrible. They sent me an old old laser that was behind the times it was an old model and my wife marcella came to help us get started and she couldn't believe that, that they sold me this laser that was a was a piece of junk anyway they changed it and then they had to change it again and then they finally gave me a, a lsx we made a deal and that came in broken and just i mean you could tell <laughs> finally so that was a year and a half later and Marcella, I had already asked her to marry me. And uh, so we got married. And she said, look, dump laser sight. Bad company, bad people. Just dump them. And so well, we, should, we, should, we, should, we should add that your wife, Marcella, is an ophthalmologist as well. She is, yes. She uh, trained with Arturo Chayat in Mexico. And um, yes. she's been a great supporter. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very so She excited. tells you to dump laser sight. Dump laser sight. And uh, we, I already had a relationship with Bashanam, so we, we bought a Bashanam laser. And, and uh, you know, now I'm, a, I'm the medical monitor for Bashanam lasers uh, in Technovas in, in Germany. So I, I deal with, with all the issues when it comes to you know, new developments and so on for the eczema laser and also for the femtosecond laser as well. 
So wow. it's crazy how it all goes. And yeah, you know, four, four lasers later, and I met my wife's laser site. So even though it was not a good experience, I learned one thing though. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, you know, when you do business with anybody, you're going to give them your money. Just make sure that the kind of individuals that you would have home for dinner. Oh, I like that. If they're not, you know, they got to be good people, right? They got to be clean. Right. They got to have integrity. And if that's not the case, think twice. Um, you know, make you look for an alternative because uh, I think that's really important. And I've and I've again lived by that rule ever since. Uh, although I'm very thankful that I met my wife through Laser Sight, and um, and life has been good as a result. But yes, that's, that's incredible advice. So I love that. Make sure it's someone you'll have at your house for dinner. Another one I heard was, if you decide to go into business with someone as a partnership, ask yourself, would you want to go on a family vacation with that person? Bring that person and their family with you and go on a family vacation together. I was like, whoa, that's that's a great question. That, that's a step forward. That's a, I mean, yeah, dinner, dinner's a, you know, there's one thing, but a vacation, yeah, that could be quite quite dramatic. <laughs> And then now you've grown Center for Sight incredibly. Like you're now you're multiple locations. You're incredibly busy. It's wow, been an incredible success for you. Yeah, it has been good. And uh, but it's been organic. And uh, and so we, we have two surgical sites, and we also have a, a it's a satellite that's in London, based in London for the international side of things, and for the you know for convenience for patients. But we I operate out in the countryside. We have a site right now, village where we live in in Surrey, a place called Oxshot. It's where Chelsea Football Club live. Um, there you go. Training grounds are just down, three miles down the road. But I, I have to. I hasten to add, I moved here before they did. <laughs> well, so if, if, if they miss a goal, I can only assume it's because of their oh, eyesight. Okay. And you did oh, a good job. I think somebody else deals with their side of things. Okay. Um, uh, their, with their eyesight. Uh, their um, so and and, and, the, and the other place is in East Grinstead. So I thought I was going to stay in the health service. So I built uh, an eye hospital in East Grinstead, um, and uh, gosh. The way it goes, a year later, I had a fallout with the chief executive who wanted to try and micromanage me. And uh, my, my parents couldn't micromanage me. That's where they sent me off to boarding school. And I was going to say, <laughs> I had a suspicion. At the age of 50, I have a chief executive trying to micromanage me. And it's, it's not going to work, is it? So I thought, well, you know what? I'd go on a sabbatical. And if he was still going to be there after I came back, then I was going to resign. And he was, so I left. Um, and again, that was... Uh, that was great because it's. I was working really hard, running a department, right. building it, doing research, doing basic science right. stuff, stem cells, trying to build center for site, growing that side of the business, um, traveling like everybody else, uh, and yeah, that, that that a big chunk got cut out, and I think I will live longer as a result of that. So again, I did my time, and right. uh, and, and I am now where I am, and and it's I am yeah, it's a good place. I. I I, I'm, I'm very pleased with where things are. We, we do want to grow further. Uh, I, 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 what I did was set up a, a very American-like practice where, you know, we've got technicians and support and, a, 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 and an ophthalmologist does the work of an ophthalmologist, which is to nice. see patients, diagnose, and do surgery as opposed to the trivial pursuits. Now, that doesn't happen in the UK. A lot of, a lot of my colleagues... Oh, really? We'll do the take the visions, do the pressures, do the IL master, do the, the pentacams and so on. It's a waste of time. But it's kind right. of and they, they, are, they just need to need to put their hands in their pockets and spend a bit of money and 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 increase their volume of practice. Right. Support. And then I think there are, there are groups now learning that. But we were kind of early in in, in, in getting started. And I know us, but I think there are many that have told me that we've, we've inspired them to do the same. And I and I cheer them on. I think there's right. a big vacuum there for ophthalmologist-run practices. And every time I hear of a new one, I cheer them on. I think it's great. I don't see them as competitors um, or, or even rivals. I think it's, I, I think it's, this is our, this is our, our fantastic. They're brothers and sisters, they're, they're colleagues, of course. Exactly, exactly. And it's, you know, anything we can do to help them <laughs> get on their journey, well, why not? Uh, uh, that, that's, uh, it, 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 it sets, I, I feel the duty to do so uh, since I've had the privilege right. of learning how. Um, so, but I mean, you know, the alternative is is big corporations, uh, you know, cherry picking, and we have those too. And actually, unfortunately, they do harm the industry. And uh, right, and it it it, it makes a, it makes it yeah. much more of a battle for us. The eight hundred pound gorillas that are out there, they they know who they are. And um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a problem. But anyway, that's a, there's room for everybody. 
Right. Well, I think I think doctors should be he- the captains of the healthcare ship. And I long for the days when we have just the doctors running the show as opposed to now the business types who come in and think that the doctors are just employees. So I think that's that's a great valid point there. Well, now it's a, it's very telling, is that there's a shortage of doctors in the United States and in the in, in Europe uh, and everywhere in the world. There's going to be shortages of doctors. Well, you know that the doctors are going to wind up being in that privileged position again. But they should they should embrace it and 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 right. learn to maintain their leadership position. Now, not every doctor can be a leader, as you know. Uh, there are, there are some that want to be leaders and should be leaders, and there are others that don't want to be leaders and they just want to come and do their work, get great pleasure out of looking after after patients. And you know they need to f- figure out figure it out for themselves, but doctors really should lead. I, you know I'm totally with you on that one, and and they should be encouraged to do so, and they should muscle in if they can, on leadership right. positions. Um, otherwise, yeah. they pay the price of being pushed around, Maybe. becoming dependent on 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 systems and and organizations that are not working in their best interests, and they go right. home not feeling accomplished. Right. But I think we're seeing that in the U.S. now, a lot of younger doctors are doing combined MD degree as well as MBA degree, Master of Business Administration. So they're doing combined MD, MBA degrees, yeah. which I think is a great move for the future because, let's face it, you go back to, to secondary school or even university, the smartest kids in the room were not the business types. They were the ones who were doing medicine. No, that's right. And it, it is, it is uh, interesting that, that in medical school, we don't. there's a lot we don't learn. Uh, right. And, I, and it, it is great to see those MBA programs and, and also other ventures like uh, you know, Francesco Coronas and Amanda Coronas. Have, I've, I've, I've got a new conference in March, and I'm going to plug it a little bit if you don't mind. Oh, I'm for sure. The advising committee. It's called Entrepreneurs. It's a great name. And it's, uh, it's, it's to do with the business of, 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 of ophthalmology, not just how you run your practice and all the rest of it, but right down to to you know investment if you've got if you want to if you have, you've got a startup you've got some ideas right. it's it's the whole business of ophthalmology but a lot well, of tell it, me more about the meeting i'll put a link down below for our viewers and our listeners right. so you can you can check it out so we're going to have this podcast hosted or, or aired in february so it'll be the following month of march where's mm-hmm. the conference going to be it's going to be in stressa in uh, in italy it's a bit north of milan a very nice place um mm. And it's uh, it's on from I think it's the seventeenth of March. About, about I'll put a link down below. Yeah, and uh, it's it's there's going to be a lot of uh, well-known uh, um, doctors. It's, it's mainly a European meeting, but there's 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 some U.S. representation as well. And it's going to be uh, they're, they're going to have experts in their own fields, not right. doctors. So when it comes to finance, there'll be people who understand money. And understand how to convey that information when it comes to marketing and dealing with social media. The experts there, the there, 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 there are expertise in all different areas, and it's going to be an, a, quite a different sort of meeting, a bit like mm. ACOS Europe. I don't know if you ever, ever attended the ACOS Europe meeting. I was just there, sure. A lot more discussion, a lot more um, uh, a, 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 a interaction, discussion, and interaction, and informal, um, and very collegial. So uh, it's interesting. It's our first conference, and. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it. And, and awesome. Uh, well, I won't be able to make it this year, but I'll put it on my calendar for 2025. That was good. I think uh, we're grateful to have you. We'll have you chip in there and <laughs> read your, your perspectives. Well, there's one important thing you said too earlier, which is like the the American style, let's say, of practice, which is, I agree with you. I try to delegate as much as possible. Mm-hmm. I want to do the things that only I can do. Like I can answer the phone. I can run a, a you know a biometry test on the eye, but there is no one else in the entire clinic who can do the actual surgery. No, so I should focus on what I do, which is surgical decision making, the new patient consult, and doing the surgery. That's right. And you know what? When you have technicians who are, who do all those investigations day in day out, they get much much better at doing it than anybody else. Right. So that bandwidth of error goes down tremendously. So you can start to rely heavily on their abilities. And why not? They're right. in. So everybody has a role to play uh, in delivering what we want, which is fantastic outcomes for patients. Um, you know, making make sure our bandwidth of error, lens calculations or, 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 or refractive errors that we're choosing to correct are, are, are down, to, the, down to, the, to, 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 to a fine limit. 
And, right. and I, you know, and we always know when a new technician arrives, you know, I'm, I'm on guard and I've got to take a look at the data to make sure it's actually accurate and it's within right. the, the, the signal to noise ratio is, is appropriate. Right. Um, but yeah, they should, you know, they do it all the time. They, they can very, very good, very adept at it, way better than I could ever do it. Right. And then you want to build up that working relationship over the course of years. The yeah. trust you have there is, is immense. Yeah, that's right. And and yeah, it's, it's, it's all teamwork, isn't it? It's all it's all about right. working together. And the same in the OR as well. I, I try and do, I do what I have to do as, as a surgeon, but I don't want to do with all the other things. The, everything else is organized for me. All the planning is done in advance. And again, it's, I learned all this under Ed Holland and Dick Lindstrom and seeing those high volume cent, uh, organizations. And I realized that they, you know, they, they, they have a peaceful life. They're pretty content. They don't, have, they don't have to worry about all the hassles. It's all, it's all sorted out for them. It's, it's, it's not, it, 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 it may seem expensive. And as I tell our colleagues in the UK, you, you know, you come, they come to visit me and they see all the, 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 the people around us supporting us. So like, yeah, it looks expensive, but you know what? It's better for, you, for me as I'm going to live right. a life and <laughs> I'm much more accomplished. I'm doing what I am trained to do. Why should I do, and why should I follow the trivial pursuits? I don't want to do them. And I'm with you 100 percent. I delegate as much as possible, and let me. I find true pleasure and true enjoyment in doing the surgery. Mm -hmm. But I, I'll tell you now, if it comes to doing a LASIK, don't trust my refraction. Trust my optometrist. Yes, He's right. far better at it than me. No, that's right, and they do it all the time, and they understand what's important, and they they right. also see the patients afterwards, and so they know the, they get the feedback. You know, that was was that my refraction? <laughs> that error was that me, or is that this? Did he, did he plug in the wrong uh, 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 correction? Um, right. But yeah, you're right. It's it's uh, it's uh, uh, might as well use people who have their own level of expertise well to support what we all do. Wow, fantastic! Now, so you've built this incredible center. You're doing a ton of surgery. You're enjoying your life. You and your wife are obviously very busy surgically. What's next for you? What's the next? What's next on the agenda? Well, we have a, that's an interesting you ask. I mean, I, I, I was trying to figure out what to do there myself. But one of the things I, I need to do is, is uh, do some planning for this organization. Uh, I'm in my 60s. I'll be 64 in a few weeks' time. And, well, uh, you, you look much younger than me. My gosh, you look amazing. Well, it must be kids keeping me young, you know. <laughs> the, the, so I'm you know, very proud of our, our, uh, our son and, and our daughter, Olivia, is uh, both of them, Olivia and Fernando, they're both going to qualify as doctors this year. Oh, fantastic. I hope they stay in medicine. But um, anyway, this is, it's a long haul over here. But I'm uh, very, very proud of them. So well, I hope they choose ophthalmology instead of orthopedics. Well, my wife says, uh, Marcella says that she will ensure they do that. Um, <laughs> so, I, you know, kids, I don't know about you, but kids don't listen to their dads. They do listen to their mother. So, so mm -hmm. I leave it to the mom to sort out. So there's, that's great. But we, I have a, um, uh, myself and a, a retina colleague, a friend, um, Tom Williamson, have set up um, a, a startup. And we call ourselves Infinite Medical Ventures. And I oh, yeah, wow. used to take innovation and from anybody and try and help them move it forward. Because it's, yeah, the number of people that have ideas, good ideas, that just go nowhere, they, they think they, right. you know, they go, they, they, they go through the IP process, they spend huge amounts of money, and then they come to a standstill, or they don't have the, the resources, whatever. Now, we didn't either, but we had right. our, own our own own ideas, and we developed something that we were hoping to to um, commercialize with the assistance of, 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 of a, a strategic but it's been a it's been a very steep learning curve, but it's been a huge amount of fun, and um, I think you know with, with with thirty something years of of experience in ophthalmology, it's time to 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 make use of that uh, leverage it. Sure. So between a retina guy and an anterior segment guy working together, um, we've, we've we've actually done all this on our own steam, our own cash. Uh, it's now time to, to get some funding from others, but you know, our, our, what we want to do is more more of the innovation side, not deal with the hassles of of quality management and all the awful things that you have to deal with as a manufacturer. I'd rather somebody else deal with all that, and I could spend time dealing and myself and Tom dealing with with new ventures and 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 and, and the pipeline of, of future products. So we're we're learning the business. It's been a very steep learning curve, but we actually have. Um, 
a product that could be used both in the clinic and also in surgery. And um, it's going to be it's going to be a bit of a disruptor because it's going to take existing technologies and and undercut them tremendously, which I think is making some of the strategies a bit nervous. But uh, we'll see how it goes. It's a um, it's a we, we spent quite a lot of cash on it, and it's great to see the the, the development uh, take shape and actually work. So I think it's. And it's it's important to be able to switch gears every so often in your career. Like you were saying, when you were 50 years old, you had some issue with some hospital. You say, you know what? Take a sabbatical. Oh, still not working out. You know what? I wish you well. Let me do my own thing. I did the same thing. Uh, at, at 52, I actually stopped doing university professor duties. I stopped mm -hmm. teaching residents. Oh, and okay. I just said, yeah. Oh, so I was doing half my week in private, pra private practice and then half my week in university. And I stopped all my UCLA resident teaching activities. And that, you know, it's just, it's time to switch gears. It's time to do something different. Yeah, and also, it's also it's, I think it's very important for us to pave the way for, for others to come in too. And, right. And to, and to bring them along. Uh, you got, you got, there, there is this old empire mentality, uh, certainly in a lot of Commonwealth countries and in the UK and in Europe, where the 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 boss wants to be the boss forever right the, right and that, you know that doesn't happen as much in the united states and there's this there's this yeah i think a lot of it reflects how your how the government runs you know you've got two terms mm. and then you're out right and, they, and the same happens with societies and others i mean we got the escrs we've got these chair people that have been there for decades they don't they don't leave their positions right and, and i think with and i keep saying we've got a responsibility to make sure that we vacate the chair and let others in and we should be we should be looking for other things to do it's a great shame if you're still doing the same thing you you, you do, you're doing now as you did 30 years ago right i think you're right you have to pass the baton That's so right. for me i always thought i don't want to be some 75 year old professor teaching the same thing for the last 40 years, it doesn't make any sense. So when I was 52, I said, you know, I've done it for 22 years. I did it from the age of 30 to 52. And I said, I need to pass the baton. We need to get someone here who has no gray hair. Let him or her take over. They'll figure it out and they'll take, I'll pass the baton. And I think that was the one of the best things I ever did. No, it's good. I, I think that's, uh, uh, and, and then and you probably found other things to do, right? Oh my goodness! Oh, can't write it's, a it's amazing. Yes. It's amazing. Those those videos that you put together, you know, I suddenly I watched them. I go, wow! You know, there's, there's something to learn every single time. Not necessarily right. everything that you point out in those videos. You know, I will see right. other things going on. I go, wait a minute! That's a, that's a neat way of doing that. Uh, it's, it's it's phenomenal. That's it. But what a what a great great uh, 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 thing that you've done there. I mean, it's a. Uh, the, 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 those videos. I, I know how long it takes to make a video. It's, it's not. It's, it's very <laughs> time-consuming. Well, I put a new one up every day for and more than two thousand days in a row. You know, I've got a hundred terabytes of data right here of video. Send me more. one. I'll yeah. edit it for you. I, 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 yeah, I know. Maybe I should do that. Um, there, there's just sitting here, and I, you know, I, I, every so often I get Lucio Barato giving me a hard time about sending him a video. I go, and I wish I. <laughs> I kind of forget what I did, but I've got some, I've got some real sweet ones that I really need, need to find time to put together. I'm hoping my son will get interested in editing them for me. Um, for sure. But uh, well, yeah. after, we air, after we air your podcast, the day after, we'll feature one of your videos. So just remember, sometime the next week, send me a video of anything surgical. I'll edit it. I'll do the voiceover. Just send me the raw, raw footage. Something sure. interesting. Oh, figure well, something out. Let me take a look at that, and uh, or I might send you something that I've already edited, and you can you can put that up. Um, yeah, so. but like you, in fact, in fact, I have got a lot of projects in the ophthalmology space. I mm -hmm. can make use of your new company to to help get this from idea or even intellectual property to the next phase. So we're I'm I'm already involved in multiple things. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should talk. I mean, I think, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm an expert. You know, the, the, the uh, neither am I. Has been so steep. But there's right. nobody that you can go to, to 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 really learn from unless you've actually been in the process, unless you've worked for the mm -hmm. companies. It's kind of hard to give up the day job too, you know. So, so um, I suppose as I learn and as we learn, Tom and myself, we yeah we again following on from the point we made earlier on about passing on the baton and and and, and involving successes, it's, it'll be our duty to make sure we make this an established part of what 
of what we do in this microcosm, where, yeah, ophthalmologists can be uh, uh, enterprising and can be involved in, in, in these sort of ventures and develop uh, new tech. But there's no reason why they shouldn't be. In fact, what a great place to be. You've got the knowledge uh, right. of ophthalmology. You've got the experience in ophthalmology. You know what people want and you know what you want. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this, the, 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 the wherewithal to be able to make it happen too. And I think that that combination is fantastic, but we've got to, we've got to put it together. So, uh, yeah, the, collectively, I'm sure, I'm sure that the, the, we can make the, the future change quite considerably. And it's changing anyway. I think, I think it's going to be forced on us with artificial intelligence and augmented reality and, and simulation and all the rest of it. It's, 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 it, it's changing without, we're, we're, we can't, we can't stop it. It's going to keep happening. For sure, yeah. Like let's say, the only constant in ophthalmology is change. No, that's right. That's right. That's even, right. The eye, even the eye changes, and that's where we make our. That's where we get our business, right? With the aging, no, no, no right? absolutely. Yeah, the of course, the aging eye. But I think there's so many ophthalmologists. Like, I'm always impressed when I go to any ophthalmology meeting. Most of the time, 99 percent of the time, I'm sure I'm the dumbest person in the room. There are so many incredibly brilliant people in ophthalmology. But a lot of times they have a brilliant idea that really has never gone to fruition because they're kind of lacking this, okay, what the idea of what do I do next and lacking the support of, of getting along down the road a little bit more. That's right. And some uh, industry, the, 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 the sharp individuals may well pick up on it and, and help it through. But so much of the time they're, they're kind of caught up with their day-to-day -day, uh, uh, and, 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 uh, activities and also the, the, the old beaten path. Mm -hmm. Instead of necessarily seeing things maybe from a from a, a lateral point of view or, or a little, 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 little bit of you know thinking on the other side of, you should be of, of the brain, um, but and that's a problem. However, yes, you you the idea will resonate very well with, with the likes of you and me, but not necessarily the people that they can fund it, um, and right. they may be brave enough to be able to pitch it and bring it into uh, into play. So. It, it is, yeah, it is difficult. There, there, there are definitely loads of huge, uh, good ideas. And ACOS in, in Europe last year, there, I mean, there were so many. I, 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 like you, I sat there going, God, these guys are amazing. Where do they get all these ideas from? Right. No, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it makes, makes you wonder, you know, what, you know, what, what, what are they eating for breakfast? And, they, they, <laughs> and, they, and some of these things are so obvious. You know, you go, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, where did, it's so simple. Why didn't we, anybody else think of it before? So there, there's some there's some there's some really good work coming out of places like Spain. They right. they they um uh, I've been pretty impressed with with some of the developments there, and and actually actually throughout the world in Israel and 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 uh, other countries, it's uh they there, there's some places that are very good at fueling this creativity. Right, and of incubate, incubating some something from an idea, and then yeah. blossoming it out something bigger. And they, they've got the magic of sitting in some infertile ground. You know that that what makes it fertile: a bit of money, the 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 brain power surrounding them, mm -hmm. to toss ideas with, and 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 you know, there's also this this uh, uh, this can do attitude. Yes, it can, you, know, you don't have to have anybody hold your hand. It, it can be done, um, mm -hmm. and just get on with it. Um, I mean, I, well, that's me speculating as to how how these 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 little microcosms of 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 uh, and these little groups are able to come up with such such innovation. It's, it is it is fantastic and something that uh, smart smart governments should should take a good look at and encourage the same. Like India, India, amazing. I mean, what's going on in India right now is phenomenal in terms of of development and growth and 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 innovation and they're. They're, they've been copying uh, like everybody else, but now they're moving into their own, uh, uh, in on their own now in terms of, of development ideas. Uh, Absolutely. I just got back from a meeting in Hyderabad, mm -hmm. uh, a big cataract meeting in November, and I learned so much. I had six pages of notes <laughs> from the lectures. Yeah. And then I'm going back to India again for the AIOS meeting in March, yeah. and I, just, I have an incredible time there. I learned so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember going to ARS in 1994. It was wow. very, it was really, it was in Bombay, but 1995. It was really rudimentary. I mean, it was really basic. Now, 
it's yeah, amazing. It's, it's square. I mean, you know, we took about five, 10, 15 cases, and they took about 500. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's, there's no comparison. Well, there's, well there's, there's, there's surgeons who do 500 cases in a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> incredible. So it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's ama amazing. But I think, listen, if you get this incubator started, an ophthalmology incubator, Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm going to be one of your first clients. I got so much cooking on right here. I just kind of need help kind of getting it down the road a little bit. No, and I, you know, and again, as I said, I can't, I'm not sure I've got all the, the answers to anything, but we, with, with Infinite Medical Ventures, which is what we call ourselves, we, you know, we want a board of individuals who are able to, you know, with many talents, who are able to help us get, get things through. So our, we've got a, we, we, uh, one of the individuals we have is a gamer, is a gaming uh, software developer, because it, no. a lot of what we're using is gaming technology. And we have a, an optical scientist uh, from Turkey, but he worked for the UK Space Agency. Now he's moved on to, to a, um, a group that are dealing with, with uh, uh, heads, um, uh, heads up displays in cars. So, you know, on, wow. on, so you can look up, you know, you're looking, uh, looking up in your windscreen, you've got all the information on instead of looking down at the dashboard. So sure. and he's involved in that side of things, but he was with the UK Space Agency. So he was an optical guy. And then we have um, a patient of mine who who builds cars for Red Bull, Formula One. Oh, wow. Doing the engineering side. So he does aerospace, medical, less so, but he's got, a, got, got, got going with us now. And he does Formula One. And um, he's a great, great guy to have on board. Everything is, right. can be done. Uh, so it, we, we, those are the groups that we've got involved at the moment. But you know, we're looking for more. I'd, I'd love to have people who can advise us on intellectual property, uh, others sure. who can advise us on finance and getting getting seed money and and so on. Um, but bit by bit, we're adding them on, and uh, uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a good enough incubator to be able to handle some of the projects that you have great ideas about, and others have. Well, I have, yeah, I have no doubt. I mean, uh, often, as you know, the probably the most important thing is the team you build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. If you have a great team of great people, believe me, you'll figure anything else out. You can always hire some extra expertise. And just having the team behind you, I think, is what you need to get that project to fruition. Yeah, you can't do it on your own. It's, it's a, you yeah. got to learn everything. I, mean, I, I, I remember right early on, three years ago, thinking, oh, yeah, so they use, they use uh, Python to, to program these things. Well, so I bought a book on Python, thinking I could learn. I took one look at it. I, Forget it. <clears throat> You can't teach an old dog new tricks here, you know. <laughs> I'm going to outsource that one for sure. And right. I, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was, I was a bit deluded. Uh, I thought maybe I could do it. Be like, well, I'm fairly good in terms of uh, computer skills. I write databases and so on. But when it comes to programming and coding, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> hand, over, hand over to somebody else. It's just too time consuming. I, I just don't, couldn't do it. Um, well, it gets back to our original idea. But if you can delegate the task. That's right. So uh, it's better. You should probably delegate it. Yeah, outsource. That's a good. The thing is, the thing is also, you know, one of the things you do still need to know what can be done to be able to right. convey that to the person who's going to be doing it. Um, so sometimes you you don't need to know how to do it, but you need to know mm -hmm. what it's capable of doing. And I found that I'm sure you found that too. You 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 you, you, know, you have in your mind I what what you want, but can it be accomplished through this through this process and then take it from there um so yeah uh, having some knowledge of what what the language can do and what the coding can do then yes we talk to our, our programs like this is what i'd like to you like to do how would you do it um and we know it can be done and it goes yeah let me have a think about that and then gets back to me goes yeah yeah i figured out how we can do it i've played around a little bit what do you think of this go wow it's exactly what we wanted so, right. uh, yeah so they, they're good they're quick but I think you need to know what can be achieved. The sort of cross fertilization, you know, knowing what other people do, not necessarily doing what they do, but knowing what they do, uh, you can you can end up making phenomenal progress. So you know the Buddhists talk about about knowing the no know, having a good understanding uh, about the careers of others, about the professions right. of others. Uh, not that you want to do it, just knowing it is is, is very very useful. You understand them. And you understand how to make progress too. No, that's all the very valid points, of course. So if you have we have if we have a listener right now who says, you know what, I have such an incredible idea. I've been thinking about this, working on this for a while. I think it's gonna change ophthalmology, I think it's gonna be incredibly successful. 
What's the advice you give them? Like the first thing you'd say, okay, you know what? Secure your intellectual property first. But yeah. then what, what advice would you give them to, get, to, to take this idea to fruition along the path? I mean, there are many steps, but what would you give it as advice? <clears throat> well, I think that, that you know, securing that IP is very important by documenting it and having it. Bam, yeah. the, there are some who say, you know, get take your notebook, write it all out, have it stamped by a lawyer. So it's established. You've, you've done it. You've, you've established it. And, and then you, you need to find a way to, to form, formalize that process even further on, a, on a, an official basis, whether it's a filing a patent or whatever. But that's, a, that's really hard work. Uh, I found, we found to our chagrin, and we're now on our third patent lawyers trying to sort things out. Um, and it turns out that you know, and everybody's got all these all these lawyers have got different views, but they have to understand what you want to do too. Trying to do it yourself is really hard work. Try, going through all right. the patents and doing that that search, it involves a lot of money. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that the, the key is to find partners you can trust, who can who can you can work with, and then yes, very carefully with non disclosure agreements that are fairly fairly robust, start talking to those whom you trust. And, right. and try to move things forward, but it really depends on, on on the type of project it is. And there are some that are straightforward and don't require much in the way of of resource. By not, I don't mean by, by resource money, but 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 individuals with expertise. But then there are others that are so complicated, you need a whole bunch of in, different individuals. Right. So I think you need to figure out what what it is, what that endpoint is, and 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 what sort of talent you require. Because the more talent you require, the more expensive it's going to be. And is it that's that's again the viability of it? Is it viable? It may be the best idea in the world, but it may not be commercially viable uh, if it's if it's mm. going to be too costly to get to the end point, which means it's going to be costly to the end user and so on. But I think I think that's it's uh, that's where I mean we we've learned this the hard way. We also found that yeah, we actually Tom and myself fell into it, but quite by chance, we started working with another group, and then it just didn't work out. So we. We looked at each other. Well, actually, you know, we could do this ourselves, and off we went. Off we went, um, and we, we have, before we knew it, we were we were well, well on the journey with a lot of hiccups. You know, two steps forward, and sometimes three step three backwards, and then, then right. forward, and it just goes on like that. But what I found was the point we made earlier on is having good people to communicate with, who can advise and guide is is key, and that. Mm -hmm really hard to find those individuals which is which is why yeah, that having that network is is um, is useful how did i find my, the people that i work with i mean I, I went on these these sites that hire experts and linkedin was a great one sure i was, I was quite impressed with, with with whom i found on linkedin and most of them didn't answer but there were ones that did and uh, and we, we we developed alliances as a result of communication on linkedin um, but then there, there have been others that have advised in terms of money and how to how to raise money and so on. Although we've not raised any money at all, but just in terms of guidance, it's it's a difficult one. A lot depends on the project. Right. For 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 me, I mean personally, I'm involved with a uh, company where we got some patents finally issued. Mm -hmm. But it was a almost ten year process. Yeah, well, it's, that's that's how long it takes. It's amazing. <laughs> and you're just like, wait a minute. And then they say, oh, don't forget. Now that we have the U.S. patents. We must do the international patents. Yeah. So, boy, I mean, the cost, I, we severely underestimated the amount of time it would take mm -hmm. as well as the cost it's going to require to accomplish these things. But now I think well, I'm very happy in this position. But, wow. No, I said, no and, and, and that's the other thing. That's another good message you just relayed there is you, 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 need, you need deep pockets to be able to do it. Or right. you need somebody who has deep pockets, who believes in you, and is willing to spend that kind of money. Uh, and and, you, and, you, and really, you you've got to you can't be greedy. You've got to you're, mm -hmm. you're not going to accomplish it without without a, 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 a team. And and yeah, you've got to it, 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 everybody has got to have a bit of consideration in terms of making a project fly. Otherwise, it it just won't. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect, I would have gladly traded. A percentage of of stock ownership in the company to someone else to help kind of take on this burden of work and time and money. Yes, sir. I I think it, I think so. I think listen to get an equator of, of an incubator of that nature, which is very common, like in Silicon Valley. That's right. I think 
but it's rare in ophthalmology. You're the only one I know about. Well, we're not we're not really established yet. We're we're in the process of doing it. This is what our aspiration is, and um, I love it. And 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 hopefully we'll we, we will get there. But it's it is yeah it is, it is a difficult one. I mean uh, yeah, oh, but surely in California you got lots of ophthalmic uh, incubators and. Or no, they do. They do. But yeah, there there are other people who are doing this as well. Everyone has a great idea, but I think I think what you said earlier is very important. We got to capitalize on what's the future going to be. It's going to be that augmented reality when we're operating. You can see things. You know the thing that things are happening. It's going to be newer technologies, maybe an accommodating lens. It's going to be robotic cataract surgery. Oh, well, that's that's going to be huge. So there's so many things that are in development, but I can imagine the way we operate in the future is going to be very different. And triaging patients, AI is going to be a huge one. So it's all oh, yeah. imaging and and accurate imaging and so on, and 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 lots of data, lots of data, and and organizing the data so it can be it, it can be worked on. So setting you know start, starting starting off properly is is going to be key. Um, but again, you know, so the other thing that I, that I've also found is that a lot of people do it for money, right? Right. I, mean, I think I think that's probably the wrong motivator. It is a motivator, but really, it's about having impact. So you know, you, you, if you're if you feel that your idea is going to make a dent in the world mm -hmm. of technology or whatever area you, you're, you're you're involved in, and you're and and, and it become, you become passionate about it, you want to have that impact. So it's more about the impact than it is about the, getting the revenue in, and the, you've got to make sure it, 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 you can make ends meet. But it's not about you know can you can you sell the company for you know hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever. It's really about you know, you're going to make a change, and, and that I think is the biggest motivating factor. So for Tom and myself, we feel, you know we can we, we're going to be disruptive. We want to change how how everybody examines patients. We want to change how things think how we work in ophthalmology. And that really motivates us, and we we feel we can do it, but it has to be affordable, and it has to be you know, it meets all these criteria. We go, wait a minute, affordability. How are we going to do that then? And so, and it it, it comes becomes your you, you, this, the, the 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 critique for yourself. How how are you going to accomplish? You need to know what you want to accomplish and why, and then right. how are you going to go about doing that? So that's been our journey so far. As I said, we're still at the stage where we need to get out there and get get something going oh, i'm hoping that there's a lot, there's a lot of work involved I'm, I'm just hoping that a bigger company will work in alliance with us and and take away some of the noise so we can concentrate on on innovation and development um and it, it looks like it you know, there's certainly been a, a, of interest to to several and uh we're you know we're we're, we're talking and hopefully we'll make progress well, I think you're right. It has to be your passion, and you have to look to kind of really innovate and kind of change the face of what we're doing now. That's right. As opposed to chasing the dollar. Because importantly, as smart as ophthalmologists are, if you took that ophthalmology brain power and applied it to investment banking, you would be far richer no, than, than doing eye surgery. Yeah, with that, with that, with that, well, all that, all those years as well, decades. Right. It, yes. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be several fold over, right? So it, it, yeah, it's a, uh, and I think what a lot of people look over, you know, look sideways and look at over their shoulders and see what others are doing. Forget all that. Just you got to do what's 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 right for you yourself. Right. Right. And, and I, you, you can you can recognize it in the people that accomplish, right? They're they're sort of kind of single minded. They they. They know what what it is they want to try and achieve, and they just yeah, they're, they're like a like a Jack Russell with a a dog in their in their, in their mouths. They're not going to let go. And, right, uh, they, they compete with themselves. And they're not competing with each other. No, that's right. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you gotta forget about everybody else. It's you. You're working. You're working on yourself. Um, and I and I you know just you know, just in my observation, seeing seeing those guys that managed to do it. They're clearly very passionate, and they it's almost like every waking moment you're consumed right. by, the, by the issue. Well, you know, if you if you if you're putting that much energy into it, ah, you're, you're going to win. You're going to bound to succeed. No, absolutely, yeah. With that with that much passion in it, you have to succeed. Like same with like, when I did cataract coaches. You know, I have an idea. I want to make a video every day, okay. and then it's like, wow, two thousand some days later, I'm still doing it. Well, 
Incredible. It's, it's not about like the one flash in the pan success. It's about like I grind every day. Yeah. Now, how long does it take you? Give away your trade secrets here. It is, it is, video a day. I mean, what's it? Generally, uh, you can the length of the video times ten is the amount of work. Oh, I know. So five minutes, six minute video is about an hour of work if you're very good at it. Mm -hmm. If you've not really edited a whole lot of videos before, that one video can take you many hours. Yeah, an hour a minute. Yeah, it can be yeah. right. That instead of 10x, it can be 60x amount of time. It can take a lot of time. Yeah. So I've obviously gotten very, very good at it. I've created templates for my thing. I've a, and then I've a, I kind of branded too. I have an intro sound. I have a logo. I always use the same fonts, the same font color. I always have the same format. And mm -hmm. I've automated as much as I can with these templates and things of this nature. But even then, every video I make, I have to do a voiceover. I've learned to do essentially 98% of the time I do the voiceover in one take. There's no editing of <laughs> You're I just talk. You're but I mean, this is, this is 2,000 videos later. So I mean, I got pretty good at it. Yeah, but it's, uh, it, no, you're right. It's a, uh, but it's just about being passionate about it. Yeah. I, you, I didn't you, do it. You often always often. succeed. I, I didn't do it often. I think, oh, God, how did I do that again on Final Cut? And I go back to the YouTube videos going, oh, yeah. So, oh, that takes time. You know, oh, yeah, that's what that, I remember that now. And I go off and do it. But uh, yeah, if you're doing it all the time, I suppose you get to be pretty, pretty swift at it. So for me, it's, uh, I think I'll leave that for another day, <laughs> and then it doesn't happen, which is a problem. But I've, I'm finding actually just taking excerpts of videos is great, and then, and then doing a bit more of that. So just taking little snippets, uh, little vignettes that, that help convey a message. Um, but yeah, it's amazing what you can do with video. It's a uh, right. take scraps of of all sorts of things and create a wonderful story. And it you do really well. Yeah, it's also very different depending on the generation. So I'll have comments from ophthalmologists who are, let's say, further on in their careers, at the end of their careers. And they say, well, can you show the whole video? Can you show it in real time? Whereas the very young ophthalmologists in their 30s or 40s, yeah. they, they are always watching it at least in 2x, 2x speed. And <laughs> they just want to get right to it. I and mean, if you look at like with the way videos shifted, even now, people watch videos on, on Instagram, or TikTok, which are like very, very brief. Everything's sped up. They don't want to. No one wants to watch it in real time anymore. Well, the attention span is very, very short, right? So <laughs> that is the problem. I see them on my own kids. They they got several things going on at one time. And then, what are you actually watching? Well, everything. But you're, mm -hmm. you're not really watching it. You no, know, but there are bits there here that take my interest, and then I might switch over. And when that, <laughs> that's interesting, you know, really, but. <laughs> When they were when they were younger, they would sit there. They'd they'd go on FaceTime with their friends. They'd be in front of the computer and they have a textbook open, right? And all at the same time. All at the same time. It's different. It's different generational people together. <laughs> I think I think I think that the the younger generation, their brains are way more capable than mine. No, I you know, I think they are, and certainly what they learn in medical school now. Gosh, I I, I mean, I, I don't think I, I would have got through medical school. What in terms of what they have in the curriculum, it's phenomenal. The the knowledge that they, they have to they have to accumulate. Wow. Well, and, they learned everything we learned thirty years ago, and, and then on top of that, all the developments in the last thirty years, they learned that too in the same amount of time. Yeah. No. So I sent to Olivia today, so she's revising. So I said, well, Olivia, Olivia, I've never seen you with a textbook. Oh, we don't use those anymore. So yeah. how do you revise? It's all online. There's all these. <laughs> You know, I'm not sure I could do that <laughs> to revise without a I right. I mean, the, old, the old style. Yeah, I could pick up information, but I'd like to see progress. I'm getting for that darn book, and I know when right. I'm not coming to the end. Um, uh, looking at a Kindle or an iPad, I'm not sure I, I'm, I'm getting to the end until I look at the the the, the 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 that little bar that tells me how close I am. But yes, yeah, right. it's, it's wired up differently. Well, but you know, I think we have to embrace that. So even me, my my latest cataract surgery book about how to learn cataract surgery. It's kind of, it's very basic. It's meant for very young surgeons or surgeons in training. It's a free PDF file as a book. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's not a physical book. There's you go to my website, there. you click on it, you can download it, you can put it on your phone, on your iPad, on your laptop, send it to your friends and just enjoy it. It's all there. So right. it's... Right, yeah. Yeah. And then the, the, the neat part too, though, if you didn't have the past, if you had it as a, as a physical book on your desk, well, you, you can't hit play for the video. 
No, no. Here, no they, can, they can read your book and hit play and watch the video of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, that, that integrated uh, media format is fantastic. So, you know, the, with, with Olivia, when she started at, at um, uh, medical school, they gave her an iPad. And yeah. they, they gave them a new iPad because it's the old one's, you know, the bigger one. With, with, uh, and all their, all their schedules and everything gets ported across to their calendars. And it's, it's incredible. They, they can, they, uh, there's not enough room in the lecture halls for everybody. So they, can, they, they webcast the, the, the lectures. So wow. if she's making time, she can sit outside or she can sit in a cafe, Starbucks, and watch, uh, watch the lecture take place. That's Unheard of in our time. I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> that would change. Really, yeah. In our days, we had to take notes during a lecture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you weren't there, you'd have to borrow somebody's notes, right? Right. Now you can just play back the lecture anytime you want. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. amazing. No, I think you're, you know, to sum all this up, I think there's so much change in ophthalmology. It's, it's so good. It's mm. really going to advance our field. Clearly, the way we're going to operate in 10 years is not the way we're doing it now. We'll have amazing techniques and technologies. And, and I encourage all our listeners, all our viewers, please get involved. If you have a great idea, run with it. And make sure, like you said, two things. Number one, you're passionate about it. And number two, it's going to have that big impact in our field. And if that's the case, you should absolutely pursue it. Go for it. Go for it. And, and as, as Walter Emerson says, you, know, you, have, you have an idea that the universe conspires to make it happen. If it's a good idea right. and you're really passionate about it, it, it just it happens. And there's, there's some sort of magic out there that helps that take place. I just believe it. it, it, it it's amazing. If it's the right thing, but, and, you, and you're, as you say, passionate, it, it'll always take yeah. things work out. And uh, it's, that, it's that magic. I don't know what it is, but it's out there. And I love to keep tapping into it if I can. Why, why they still let me? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Shiraz, you've had an amazing journey in ophthalmology. I mean, truly fascinating. I'm now, done, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, amazing journey so far. Yeah, yeah. But like, I just, I'm just so excited about your next chapter. I think you've got. I love how you're changing gears a little bit and saying, okay, the next chapter, I'm going to focus on this. I think that's just brilliant, and I think that's what we should all we should all think about. Well, I hope it works. I hope it works. Oh, with with you, you know, at the helm, there's no doubt. You know, the, 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 there's, there's this, um, you, know, you know, as we as we start our careers, we start off sort of gradually, and then it, then it starts going exponentially, and then it sort of plateaus out. Right. And the key thing is when you're starting to plateau out to find something else, because then you have a bit of time that's, that starts that gentle journey, because then that will ex eventually go exponentially, right? Right. You have something to replace whatever you leave behind. And... Um, yeah, that's the way I see it. It's, 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 it happens in everything. You, you, you get to a point where, okay, that, there's, there's not much more you can do. And either you're getting too old for it or you're getting tired of it or some other young Turk has taken over. And then you find something else to do. And uh, I think it's important for, for all colleagues to consider, you know, what next in terms of your own development and, 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 and what are you going to do for, for yourself and, and uh, in your on this journey that we have on this planet, um, right? I think it's uh, I think it's very important also to keep ourselves occupied. I was, uh, my God, I've got a ninety-three-year-old father who runs a pharmaceutical industry still. We're trying to sell it, but he's ninety-three, and um, you know, Asian genes are not, not always the most brilliant. They do get but he's done really well. He's got him out of bed. He's completely on the ball. Um, yeah. You know, the, the the physical body is not the is not fantastic, but he's his mind is there. It's. Uh, He's got this old Gujarati brain that uh, figures things out very, very quickly. Um, and uh, it's, the, I don't, the, the, how has he kept it up? Because he's been, he goes to work every morning. And just, just, you get, that gets him out of bed. I think that's important for all of us. We need to keep our brains going. Right. But, you have to have a purpose. You have to have, but I think you have to have a purpose. And I think it's really important. Once you're still in, get stagnant mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you're not learning and growing and whatever. You need to change gears a little bit. You can stay in ophthalmology like we all do, mm -hmm. but a different aspect of it. And right. in, in initially, some of the changes I've had in the past, when they happened, I saw them as a bad thing. But then it was only in retrospect, like, you know what? That turned out to be a blessing in disguise. It was the best thing ever. It's funny how when you're young, you're more, and sometimes at, at, at times you think you'd be embrace things, but you're more hesitant. Right. But yeah, as you as you mature along, you realize that there's a lot of new things out there that you you don't know what's you actually don't know which what's going to be what's going to 
what's going to be the, the, the thing that we, we're going to keep and what we're not going to keep, right? It's, it's, right. it's very hard. And uh, I remember Dick Lynch was saying, you know, all I can say is that this is what we do today. And 50% of what I what I do today is going to, probably going to be medieval or rubbish. In about <laughs> and, and he's got a point there, right? I mean, it, it, yeah. change, change happens. Yeah. Ah, oh, wow. I had an amazing time talking to Shiraz. I'm yeah. like so motivated. I want to get up and like start writing down new ideas and start. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're a brilliant guy. I've lo again, I love having you as a close friend in ophthalmology. Learned so much from you. I'm going to put some links down below for your meeting you have coming up with, with, with uh, Dr. Peronis and whatever other links you want to share with us. But again, thank you so much for doing this podcast. What an inspiration you are. I'm really blessed. Well, we're all flocking together, right? It's great. I've watched you in great admiration, and uh, we've talked about it with Cadrite Coach and, and others. Great energy. And uh, we, um, yeah, we'd all like to be like you too, Uday. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fantastic. So, for our viewers, remember we got a new podcast every single week. Be sure to check it out on Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Google, and where you find your podcasts, obviously on YouTube and Cadrite Coach as well. And then the links are going to be down below. And then we will catch you next time for another amazing podcast.